I wasn't doing anything. So this is the painting I'm going for. I don't know if you can see. Yes, you can. Okay. So it's a landscape. It's realism landscape. The whole point of this kind of style in abstract painting, sorry, landscape painting, is that you look at them from afar, right? So if you go really close, you can't really see details, but if you look at it from far, you'll be like, oh wow, that's a pretty landscape. Okay. So just one thing I want to talk about is the color black. Okay. Now we do have our own tube of paint with black, but this is the size of my canvas for today. It's pretty small. I'm actually painting this as a gift for somebody, so I might as well make a video out of it. Okay. So we go layer by layer. I am going to paint like this so you can see better. And I look really tan when I do this. Anyway, not tan, just whatever. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna cover my background. I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna blended with the black color we made which is a little darker gray for me over here now i'm just going to outline everything that i need to paint because i don't want to just go ahead and mess things up so first we have a line for water and land this is my line for water and land and then I have a few mountains. I have a tree coming all the way here. Then the mountain is about here. Down over here. Then we have faraway mountains back there. Okay. So it's really rough as you can see. It's just simple, plain, rough lines. Then we have our trees over here, which we do not need to do now. Okay, now I don't know if you can really see. Okay, you can see. Alright, so next up, now I'm going to start actually painting first layers. First layers, white, a little bit of black, and a little bit of yellow. And I'm using acrylic paints. Acrylic paint is water-based colors. I say that a thousand times a month of my public art classes i gotta let them know that when you start painting and you want to blend anything you'll have to go really fast because once the paint is dry on your canvas you cannot blend now we'll start with the sky over here the strokes i usually use is crisscross because you want to see lines going everywhere it's not just one up and down or just i think the lighting is better now okay so yeah, I was talking about strokes. It needs to be pretty much crisscross. So you see, I'm using a cross method. I'm gonna fill the sky with my pale, very light pale yellow. You can't see much on the camera, but it's pretty pale yellow. Then I'm gonna go ahead with some dark gray at this corner. Now you see my pale yellow is wet, which is the reason why I can blend it in with my grayish shade. Now this painting needs this texture. So you're blending but you're still keeping these lines from your paintbrush. I've blended it but I have the lines showing you can tell the section okay next I'm gonna add a little bit more of pure white not mixed with anything else just pure white the middle because that's where the sunlight is I'm 
again I'm only able to blend because the colors on my canvas is still pretty wet. Now I'll get I'll come back to this. Remember we're doing first layer. First layers are just simple and rough. Next I'm gonna go for some faraway mountains. Also, whenever you're mixing shades on your palette, when you start applying them on your canvas, it does show a shade or two lighter. So I'm just gonna, you can check sometimes. I feel like it's too light. I'm gonna bring in more black, the black color. Yep, there we go. So I have this shade. I'm going to bring in my flower mountains, kind of shape them up, have them pointy. So next, I'm just going to, again, outline everything. As I'm outlining everything, I want to start bringing in some light shades, which is again the pale yellow we made because the sun's hitting this area of our mountain. So we will have the same shade over it. I'm gonna blend it a little bit together. First corner, a little bit over here. This is all just playing with our brush strokes, really. It's just the brush strokes that matters over here. And go ahead again with some dark gray. You can already tell that they're far away mountains. It looks very nice. I'm gonna bring in some more yellow in the middle over here. Again, because the sun's hitting this straight over here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be here. Some pure yellow on top. Again, we, we keep blending everything, so don't hesitate in bringing in some color into your paintings. I mean, that's the whole point of a painting, you know, colors. So why be hesitant about it, right? So just bring it on your canvas. Blend this together. I need some more white over here. I by mistake went over this part on the sky. I wasn't supposed to go there. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm also going to bring some white over here over the line of my uh, mountain because again the sun's hitting it. You might be able to see a little bit of the mountain, but not all of it over here. In the picture, the mountains are darker, so I'm gonna go ahead, bring in the darker shade back. Heck, I'm gonna make it even more darker, just for the shadow parts. Now remember, shadows and light is all we're playing with. The whole painting is about light and shadow. Going from dark shades to medium shades to light. So I'm gonna go ahead, just gonna bring, no, not my face. It's really hard for me to paint this way. I'm literally painting like this. So what you see is the way I'm looking at my painting. You know what? I can just bring it on my easel. Just fixing the camera angle. Just fixing the tripod. Oh, and that's all my paints. The whole thing is just full with paints. Okay, now isn't this a million times better? I think so. Okay, where were we? We were painting the, like I said, we need some shadows going on. I'm going to use my paintbrush this way, not like the way you use your, hold your uh, pencils or pens or whatever. This way you're more free to do very nice strokes. Right, so now I'm just adding some dark parts, the dark shadows that you will see in the faraway mountains. And then I keep going back and forth with my light shades and my dark shades. And and then I just want to make it, I just want to blend it a little bit inwards because I don't want the faraway mountains to have any details. Why? Because it's far away. Duh. I keep blending it, keep blending it. Okay, we're going to 
gonna leave this as it is. Now overdoing is also a thing. When you overdo a part of your painting, you can keep messing it up instead of keep fixing it. So if you think you're tired or just like, I can't do it, leave your painting, don't do anything, come back to it once you're, you know, take a little bit of rest. Just don't keep on working in one area. Keep moving forward. Next, we're gonna go for the mountain, the other hills. So you see, I'm changing between using my paintbrush this way and this way. You can do both. You keep changing it, see what works. But obviously, make sure you always try to hold it this way. This way you have more artistic strokes. This way you can even twist your paintbrush very fast and very easy. This way you have to kind of move so many fingers to twist them. So you can just do this. some gray shades over here you can see it's pretty dark so I'm gonna go light over it See my color, my paint is drying up, so it's very hard to blend colors. And so now I'm just first. blending some sharp areas. You don't want to completely have some sharp brush strokes. I'm just gonna go over with some light colors of pale yellow. And I, as you as you can see, I've actually blended out the black tones, the dark tones. Uh, more dark gray. There's some blue, and then I've added some blue shades, some gray this blue. Area is pretty, and this area is pretty blended, very misty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my paintbrush. I'm not going to add any. Yeah, I'm just going to wash my paintbrush and go over the paint on the canvas instead. I'm not bringing any paint over anymore for misty areas, only because my paint is still wet. So I can take some paint from here, I don't need to really take more paint. Plus, for Misty Works, you just need to blend everything together, which is already on your canvas. There you go. Really nice. Perfect. So now you have the foggy mist. Now we're going to add some green. The green over here is pretty, um, how do you say it? Olive green. Olive green is yellow and black. You get a nice olive green. You can also use your paintbrush again, the freehand style. Just dab some green everywhere. By dabbing, you create some dots, some detailed work. I do not say splendid green, I said blended green. You have some bright areas that I missed. I think I'm gonna overdo it if I keep continuing. There's some green over here. Just keep adding colors that you see. Just be free. Don't hesitate. You're not gonna ruin anything, I promise. And if you do, you can always fix it. Okay, so again, there's some purple. I see some purple. So I'm going to mix blue, red, and a little bit of black because I can see some red as well. Spot around, just dab your paintbrush. You might not even have to go again over this part. It's already pretty done. Next, we'll go for this area. We have a darker green shade. Back into it. Great. Now I'm going to bring in some. wash my paintbrush I'm just gonna clean it off with my tissue and I have a dry brush with a little bit of green on it which is exactly what I need right now olive is with black and yellow and if you have a yellow ochre paint shade which is this one over here this is a nice yellow ochre it looks like light brown it's not it's yellow ochre if you have that you can use that with your 
blue, which will give you a very, very nice shade of olive. In my painting, my painting is more warm in my picture, I mean. They're warm colors, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more yellow and brown to the green. It's pretty yellow brown, so it still looks like green, just more. Now let's go for the background over here because most of it is covered with the trees that we're gonna do at the end. I'm going to bring in some dark gray purple shade, and with a lot of water, like watercolors. Just add a lot of water. I'm just gonna fill this in. And when I get to this part where I've already done my painting, I'm just going to blend in all the colors together so it looks like it's a part of it. Oh, hello, Snowy. Okay, now we're going to go for the piece of land. The piece of land is pretty much yellow and white plus yellow ochre. If you don't have yellow ochre, you can just use your light brown, but mix with yellow. Yes. Okay, now we have some yellow ochre. And then we have some dark brown. Again, dark brown, you can make your own dark brown, which is all three primary colors. Blue, yellow, and red. focusing on this area because it will be covered completely by dark green trees now we'll go for the water now the water is pretty gray we have so many colors in the water we have gray we have green Snowball. I'm recording. the same colors that we use for the mountains because the water is a reflection of the scenery so I'm adding some uh, blue toned blues Sorry, I'm saying blue. Just uh, tones of blue ish gray. And some dark uh, paint, dark black paint for the corners. And I'm also adding yellow tones of gray as well. And then again, some green because you can see some olive green in the background. Okay, next we're going for this area. This is pretty orange, but also pretty yellow ochre. This color. It's never gonna focus, but you know what I mean. Now the whole canvas is covered with our first layer. One more thing, you need a lot of patience when you're painting something like this. You wanna go slow, you don't wanna go too fast with anything. Part. I am going over the faraway mountains with some pale yellow which is the obvious beams of sun hitting the beautiful faraway mountain so I'm adding some yellow ochre into my white mixing that to uh, the other and sorry for the stutter I'm talking but I I'm cutting that out because I'm pretty sure the audio was not useful uh, so yes just adding some pale yellow all around where the sun is hitting between the mountains and on top of the mountains next we will finally go for some background trees this is what i'm excited i'm going for the dark green trees in the background using black and green or yellow blue and some black okay now the structure of the actual two big trees keep your trees a cone kind of shape make it pointy on top bigger at the bottom Right at the bottom, you're good. It looks like a tree. Some dark green. I will go over the dark green again with light bright green. But until it dries up because we need the background, the first layer to be dry so we can go for other layers. I'm just scratching on my canvas with white. 
for from where the sunlight's coming in. The scratching will give you a very nice. Oh my god, that scared me so much. Uh, the scratching will make the texture really nice. Now let's go for some trees over here. We have some yellow, some orange. Now, obviously, I hope you know how to make orange. Orange is just yellow and red. Okay, next we're gonna go for this. Now, there's a tree over here. That's why I left a gap in these in these two trees. Again, just dabbing my paintbrush over here, and I'm gonna leave it as it is. Next, I'm gonna go for the next one, obviously. I put some yellow on top, even a little bit of yellow here, because it's just way too orange. Street brush, not round. I'm very sh this one is very short. Okay, so I'm gonna use the very short one now because there are some details that I need to work on. some darkness into the the land orange dark orange Brick red and orange colors, some dark black. Uh, why I say dark black is sometimes you want to mix your black with brown. That means dark black. <laughs> I know black is dark. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just adding the hill parts. I'm going to uh, draw the other hill uh, in the background. I'm also going to add some olive green on top where the light is hitting. Keep the bottom areas of the hill. Uh, short basically it's like a small cliff they're small cliffs so I'm just adding black first for a darker layer and then on top I'm gonna go with my lighter colors like yellow green shades of olive we just want to keep the whole painting for brown and everything and this is where I'm continuing in the night at night so it's darker I'm just going over the trees with my light green now, now that the background of the trees is dry where we added just dark green. Now I'm adding some lighter olive shades on top, not everywhere as you can see, just where the sun might be hitting it, not in the middle either. And I've added more dark black in the middle of the tree to keep the depth of the tree. And I've added a few stick-like figures where as if you're looking at far away uh, tree trunks or tree branches. The shadow of the two orange trees I have. Of course, it's a uh, pretty light. Uh, there's some daylight as you can see. The sun is hitting hard. <laughs> and so you want to keep your uh, shadows up to date on your paintings. I'm also going back to the cliff area at the bottom where we have some shades of brown reflecting on the water. So I'm using a more pale brown, yellow, brown, and white. I've also added some gray colors of the first layer for these stones. And that was me saying hello to you in the middle of my freaking video. I'm also going back to the trees here. All right, so forgive me to either record or it wasn't recording or something happened, but I've also added two tilted lines of dark brown and black for my uh, tree trunks in the main tree trunk area <laughs> and I've also covered with the first layer of brown yellow or yellow ochre and on top I'm going with my brighter colors where the sun's shining we have pale yellow pale yellow is again yellow and white mixed together for a little bit of brown shades and then what am I doing next let me see 
Yes, I'm just gonna make sure it's light enough because contrast is all what it's about for paintings, guys. Trust me. So now you can see the depth in my trees. I'm also going for some darkness, extra darkness under my cliff areas. I'm also gonna bring in some strokes to show something like shrubs. I'm gonna go over my stones and river once again. I'm also gonna add some reflection of the stone on the water which is white and black black is where the line is between the reflection and reflection and the stone and then i'm also going to bring in some bright pale yellow on our orange yellow trees because you know you want depth you want dark medium and lightness for anything you paint i'm also going to bring in some yellow ochre on the cliff on some green Next, I'm going for more darkness under the first cliff. I'm also going to bring some bright orange red over it. Here you go. That's the bright orange red. It's mixed with the red. Is, uh, orange is mixed with red and some brown. Always mix some brown in some colors, guys, because this whole painting is about... It's all about yellow tones. What am I doing next? Next, I'm going for the river. It's gonna do main basic touches on the river, some dark, some light, uh, gray, bluish colors. You can slow down this video, guys. I just had to speed this up because my intentions were to make these videos only 10 to 15 minutes long. Unfortunately, I chose a painting that would take longer. So here I'm just going over my stones. The other stones, I'm gonna do the first layer with light gray now i'm going for some black lines to outline the stones and i'm also going to blend the black lines as i'm going forward it's all about blending not blending in some areas now i'm just bluffing because i just want to talk <laughs> this stone is like half and half it's kind of cracked in the middle so i have a black line in the middle and you've seen now that i've, I've blended it it's not completely black it's just dark gray i'm gonna bring in some lighter green brown on the water i almost want to tell myself to move my hand on the video <laughs> next i'm just gonna make the stone areas where the sh uh, where the sun is hitting with a little more bright white let's say where did I go? Here I am. Now I'm bringing the reflection on each stone with white, but it's not pure white. It's always mixed with either some yellow ochre or some uh, blue. You don't want to use basic colors straight on your canvas. You want to mix it with something, even if it doesn't show much. It Trust me, it's a big difference when you start painting, uh, applying the paint on your canvas. It's going to make this part the right part of my water with some light pale yellow because that's the reflection of the land and the land is light pale yellow i'm also going to bring in some darkness underneath the land to show the depth of the land inside the water or under the water so next we're bringing in some darkness more darkness under the under the trees not in the middle anymore you're fixing the shadow for the trees, the orange yellow trees. I'm bringing in more pale yellow on the land and some bright yellow, sorry, bright green on the tree. Now I'm bringing in some yellow green on the water where the reflection is of the main trees, the two yellow ochre trees. I'm also going to blend in more for the faraway back uh, mountains. I'm bringing in some darkness the shadow for the mountains in the back obviously it's not going to stay like this and blend it again i just wanted to bring in some more darkness so i've added the dark gray and then i clean my impression then i'm going over it again i'm also going to fix some of the purple uh brown shade adding some um yeah like i said purple uh green olive green in the other mountain the one that is uh between trees and faraway mountains i'm also gonna bring in some light gray light green gray so first i apply it and like you know after that i blend it out but not too much we don't want to blend it too much we still want to see some kind of details 
I'm also going over with more brightness where the sunlight's hitting the faraway mountains one more time. I'm gonna go for the sky. There are some, uh, there's some darkness in the sky see from the picture. So I've added a darker shade of gray on top. And I'm just going to blend it with the pale yellow for the sunlight. Now I'm gonna bring in my knife and I'm just gonna use the side of my knife to sharpen the lines of the trees. And I go for the water one more time. I'm bringing in more light on the yellow land. I'm bringing some light on the river water. And some more colors because you can just never put enough color on your painting. <laughs> so I'm bringing in the brightness now with very light gray with blue on the river. Now I'm going to bring in some darkness in the back where the shrubs are behind those tiny orange trees. It's not black again, it's black with green or dark olive color. I'm gonna blend it out with some lighter shade of olive green. I'm bringing in some brightness, which is again white with yellow or white with yellow ochre on the cliff. There you go. Kind of blending it out here and there, going over. So this concludes our beautiful scenery, guys. If you were painting this with me, please send it to me on my Instagram. I'll be linking it down below. Uh, subscribe if you want to watch more of these. If you want to paint more beautiful paintings with me, I'll explain better next time. I promise. Just learning. Uh, subscribe for more. And thank you. See you in the next one.